Conference, can I start by thanking all of our speakers this morning for what's been a really positive debate. Thank you. Julian started by setting the case for why we should pass this science policy motion. How our scientists stand proud amongst the best in the world, as Hasib explained so eloquently, with an output far above that expected for their level of funding. How every pound we spend on research can, over time, return as much as £10 to the country's coffers. Bablin just described how investment in blue skies research can lead to new industries, but not just that, to new ways of living, of working, of playing and communicating. All of our speakers have described why science is vital for all the things that we're debating here this week. Regenerating our economy, rebuilding our manufacturing, improving our health, feeding our families, and finding solutions to the big problems that threaten our world. <coughs> That's why our key call is for commitment to a steadily increasing level of science funding as a route to future prosperity and quality of life. As Judith pointed out, that's a sensible, measured increase, rather than the stop-start funding of previous governments, which actually damaged our country's capability. And that's a call which we're challenging the other parties to match. So because investment in science is vital to return to the health, of our, to, health to our economy, that's why this motion, and the policy paper it describes, sets out how science should be seen, not as some niche speciality, but a joined-up approach to providing the skills and knowledge our country needs for the future. David, Paul and Ruth described how we should embed its excitement into our education system from early years upwards. And as Bablin described, why we need teachers who can be enthusiastic role models for all our pupils. Richard called the case for those students to go on into well-supported, well-funded research careers, or to take their vital training into other fields of value. As Katie described, why we should welcome those talented people who bring their skills into our country in support of our scientific endeavour. And the original drafting amendment pointed out why it's vital to work closely with our European partners. The challenges that we use science to fight, things like climate change, disease transmission, these recognise no national borders. And that's why, as John Martin described, and the paper in point 41, describes how we should strengthen processes that translate research into industrial innovation to drive future growth and into clinical uptake to improve our health. Pratik's drafting amendment emphasised scientific evidence-based policies should be the cornerstone of our politics, with government decision-making based on fact and not on fashion. But as Ruth eloquently described, the backing of science should not just be as a generator of economic growth, even in these times of austerity. Scientific curiosity is the expression of who we are and the exploration of our place in this vast, complex and beautiful universe. It not only underpins our understanding of human function, but also of human nature, and it's our support in the stewardship of this planet. That's why science should also be seen as a cultural activity, and why we should make sure that the results of publicly funded research are openly published for the benefit of everyone. Conference, remember, the preamble to our founding Liberal Democrat constitution states we will promote scientific research and innovation. And so, led by people like Vince, Evan Harris, Phil Willis, and now Julian Huppert as spokespeople for science, we Liberal Democrats show we support science as a fundamentally <coughs> liberal pursuit. Conference, Please vote for the future of our nation and of our planet. Vote for science. Vote for the motion.